G'day folks, welcome back to our playthrough of Subnautica on episode 2. In the previous episode we have just made splashdown on this very watery planet. Uh, we were aboard the Aurora, there she is off in the distance, and uh, unfortunately something has happened and um, yeah, we escaped using that escape pod over there and we're on our own right now trying to survive. We did uh, get a notification from the lady in the PDA saying that uh, something is wrong with the drive core of the Aurora and uh, it may detonate or something like that in the next couple of hours so I'm not sure if we need to try and steer clear of the ship or if we should try to get to the ship before it detonates but uh, I'm a little bit busy right now with trying to um, get more equipment and um, to do that I need to go to some caves and see if we can find materials for more equipment. So we've got a cave system here, we've set up the pump and the pipes so hopefully we can just explore and see what we can find inside. Ooh, some quartz. Detecting sulfur deposits in the local cave systems. Sulfur is an essential component of the repair tool. Yeah, and that is essentially what I'm trying to work towards. Uh, getting the repair tool uh, unlocked so that we can repair that radio that we've got inside the um, escape pod. Uh, I think the quartz we've actually seen before and uh, I just simply need silver based wiring kits are an essential component of many habitat modules silver okay yeah um we are also looking for silver actually um we're at 18 seconds here let's just backtrack a second and just get another breather Oxygen. and yeah I'm thinking um we might actually need the quartz to make some glass uh, to also try and unlock the torch so that we can explore in the dark. Oh no, okay. Looks like we're in need of a bit of a drink. Ow! Okay, yeah. <laughs> We've seen those things before. Um, and yeah, they do uh, deal quite a bit of damage to us so we've got to be a little bit careful. I think, um, yeah there we go, we've got some sulfur inside these things. I think this is their nest or something? So um, yeah if we see more of them we need to be careful but we need to extract the sulfur from them. Okay, um, perhaps maybe this cave isn't as big as I thought it was going to be so Yeah, it doesn't look like there's too much more. And yeah, this leads back out again. Alright, let's just grab some oxygen. And we'll go back. Yeah, that was a little bit too close for comfort right there. <laughs> And yeah, I don't think there is really much else here, so it might be time to move on. I mean, I could be missing things completely, but um, if this cave is quite small, then I'm going to want to try and find more cave networks like that. Uh, hopefully ones that are a little bit bigger. Uh, we'll work our way to that direction where there's the bit of coral that's sticking out and I think we might find a few more caves nearby. I do want to grab some of this salvage though. Um, water, yes, water and fluid intake is an issue so I sort of need to address that. I've got a little bit of water here so... Vital signs stabilizing. Yep. We should be able to keep going a little bit. This gas pod is uh, a bit annoying to be honest. There we go. Alright, so let's head in this direction. Uh, I feel like perhaps maybe we are going to need to 
backtrack to the escape pod once more because, well, we're probably going to get hungry soon and also we're going to need to try and drink some more water or at least make some more water and drink it. So, let's see. I'm just trying to find the caves before we start setting things up. There's a cave here, which might be good to explore. Yeah, it looks like maybe this is an entrance way to the same cave as well, possibly. So I'll see if I can set the pump up right there. Um, I don't know about this particular cave because it doesn't seem to be too far from the surface, but I suppose I should just set things up just in case. Alright, and uh, I keep forgetting, but uh, I do need to... Oh, um... That's interesting. I thought you could only have, like, one outlet at a time. Interesting. Oh. A quantum... A quantum detonation has occurred in the Aurora's drive core. The reactor will reach a supercritical state in T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Wow. <laughs> uh Okay. So good thing we didn't really decide to go to the ship then, because that would have killed us. New blueprint. Radiation suit. Uh, let's take a look at that. There. Oh, we need the um, fiber mesh for that. Good thing we already know how to make that. Alright, so radiation suit. I guess we might find ourselves needing to traverse some areas that might be irradiated thanks to the explosion. Uh, I guess we need to try and go to the ship anyway, even though it's exploded. Perhaps maybe there's some stuff there that uh, we'll need to scan as uh, we do need to unlock some more technologies and stuff. But uh, anyway, let's continue on and try to explore the caves and um, hopefully get more of this sulfur which we need. I'm trying to get this thing to connect but perhaps maybe you can't connect it from within the um, the cave so uh, if that's the case that's fine we'll uh, we'll just use it with a couple of pipes. Yeah okay we're already starting to feel oh god Ow. Yeah, we're starting to get thirsty again. Um, there we go. Apparently scan this. A sulfur plant. These plants appear to serve as nests for the explosive organisms which guard them. The outer petals are undamaged by the presence of the inhabiting creature, suggesting a complex co-development. The plant has evolved to feed on nutrients and minerals deposit, deposited within within it by the fish. Uh, sulfuric deposits on the inner leaves provide an insight into the mechanisms by which the creature explodes. Assessment, sulfur has applications in construction of the repair tool. Okay, um, let's just grab some more O2. Uh, I know I do need to drink, so... I'm thinking of going back to the ship very, very shortly, but not before we just explore a little bit more. Uh, those eggs, yeah, as I said in the previous episode, I think we'll probably just leave them for the time being until we can figure out what to do with them. Uh, just want to really be careful about those exploding fish, because 
I'm not sure how many more hits I can take. Now it's getting a little dark here. Um, uh, that might be... yeah, okay, that that's one of the, the fish. <laughs> um, can I scan the fish? Crash fish. There we go. Um, but I sort of need to get to the sulfur, right? So, maybe I... I need to attract it and... Ow! Okay, yeah, we've taken a lot of damage. Oh god, right, O2. Yes, yes, we forgot completely. God. Oh, all right. I, I think that's the closest we've come to dying <laughs> from suffocation. Um, all right. And we're probably about to die from dehydration as well. So I'm going to swim my way back to the pod and we'll try to get some bladder fish along the way. Not really seen too many. Seek fluid intake immediately. Yep, yep. I know, I know. It's not exactly the fish that I'm looking for, but I think in an emergency we could probably drink some of the water that we've already got from the pod, because um, we've still sort of kept those for just in case. anymore because I feel like we're constantly battling dehydration I would like to be able to just like drink heaps right now okay Oxygen. so this should be enough and we've also got a bit of food so let's fix all of our ailments and there is one thing that I want to do while we're here, because uh, while I was editing the previous episode, I realized that uh, I probably have enough to make the fins, and I was sort of complaining about how we're um, moving so slowly. We just need some silicon rubber, so I'm sure we've got some silicon rubber already, so let's um, Vital signs stabilizing. double check on that. Uh, we might have the silicon rubber in here. Yeah, and I think we need a couple of those. The fabricator draws from available data to provide environment appropriate equipment using locally available materials. For your safety, this setting cannot be overridden. Okay. Um, and I would like to make some um, health packs or med packs. Oh, we need fiber mesh for that as well. Okay. Um, okay. I thought I already took this. Oh, it's a fabricator. So... Oh, right. I have just realized here, but there's a, um, a timer. Well, timer? There's a percentage there that's climbing. Which means this will automatically give you a health kit every so often. It's really good, actually, because uh, <laughs> I've been taking a lot of damage. So I definitely needed that. And maybe it's not such a good idea to make the health kit using fiber mesh. Unless we absolutely have to. We can just keep using these ones that get created. Um, Alright, so... We've got the fins now. I sort of just want to try that out. Ah, oh, yes. This is so much better. We're definitely moving a little bit faster. Should be able to get around a little bit quicker and do things a little bit faster as well. Um, right. So, now that we've shady, uh, sorry, satiated our thirst and hunger, um, I just want to quickly grab a little bit more to eat and drink. 
and we sort of just want to max things out that way we can sort of stay out for a little bit longer and not have to worry about doing this all over again. If I can just find the right fish that'd be great. But yes what an explosion that uh, that was with the uh, with the Aurora. I'm worried about radiation though but I'm guessing we might uh, get warned when we're in an area that's irradiated. Possibly. Oh no, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, I should always focus on making water first before I start cooking any of the other fish. Um, that should remove the problem of accidentally cooking the bladder fish. Okay, and uh, just as well, because the sun is up now, so we should be able to see what we're doing a little bit better. Um, oh, sorry, I do have the quartz. Can I make the torch? If I can do that pretty quickly, then maybe that's something that we should bring. So we need glass and a battery. Just need the acid mushrooms. I think I might have some acid mushrooms. Yeah, here's some glass. And the acid mushrooms. Yeah, we've got a few. So let's just grab that and let's make a battery. And I'm guessing I'm going to have to replace the batteries every so often because I, I can see here the scanner has 93% charge. So at some point we're going to run out. Um, flashlight. Perfect. Alright, so I do want to just maybe switch that to that slot. And yeah, we'll use it when we need to, obviously, but um, we'll try and save the uh, the battery power as much as we can until we need it. So on the way, I would like to pick up more of these guys. Obviously grab some more food while we're at it as well. And yeah, I actually should have checked on whether or not we have enough sulfur to make the repair tool. I'm thinking we might, because we did pick up like a couple of batches. Um, let me have a quick look at the blueprints. Yeah, I think we do have it, right? Um, unless... Unless this is just showing us how... Uh, sorry, w what materials are required, but not exactly how many. But, uh, anyway. Oh yes, it does actually show how many if you pin it. Okay, <laughs> I could have easily made it, but you know what? Since we're here, and uh, we're all sort of set up and good to go, why don't we... What's this? Table coral sample. Is this scannable? No. Uh, we did see a different type of coral before. I wonder if this is the same. Contains trace precious metals used in computer fabrication. Okay. Ah, yes. With these flippers, we're moving around so much faster now, and um, should be able to clear these um, these caves a lot quicker. Okay, so give me that sulfur. Okay, another one of those things. Oh. 
Yeah, we still can't swim fast enough to get away from those explodey fish, so that's a bit of a problem. Maybe we can get like upgraded fins or something. I scan these things. Shuttle bug. I'll um, take a look at that momentarily. I sort of need to grab some more oxygen. Um, I don't even know where we are now. Okay, we've um, come all the way out this way. Yeah, these caves can be really, really confusing. Um, yeah, there's another one of those guys. So... Yeah. <laughs> I guess I can take some of that, because uh, it's already damaged anyway. More sulfur... Yeah, I wonder if you can actually run the pipes into the cave, because that'd be really useful if we can do that. Don't need O2 soon. Oh man. <laughs> Exploring caves underwater is stressing me out. Ah, <laughs> oh, our inventory's full. Okay, well, that's a problem. Okay, let's head back because, um, I mean, I'm not going to be able to do anything else right now. Oh yes, in hindsight, I should have converted a lot of the salvage that we picked up into titanium. So I'm sure we're going to need more titanium for stuff. Yeah, and I'm getting the feeling that we're going to start to need to maybe make some storage. I don't know if we have the ability to make some storage right now. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the blueprints that I haven't really looked at. So I'm just gonna scroll a little bit slower here just to see... What is this? Pathfinder tool. Deploys holographic pathfinder discs used to map a way back out of caves or hard to navigate places. Max 20 discs per path. Oh, that sounds really, really good. Especially in those caves where it gets a little bit confusing um, trying to find the way out. Oh, here we go. Waterproof locker. Okay, four titanium for one of those. But we should be able to expand our inventory a little bit more. Okay. Um, first things first, maybe we'll just get rid of the Rex and just convert that into titanium and we need quartz on its own unconverted to glass I'm not sure but uh, maybe I won't rush into making glass until I actually need it so yeah I've got plenty of titanium now um, I need the silicon so let's just grab that and I think I have enough, right, to make the repair tool, so let's do it. Perfect. Alright, so uh, we should also just cook stuff and drink stuff. Actually, I don't really need to eat right now. We're still sort of pretty maxed out, but we could do with some more water. So, repair tool. Alright, so... Let's repair this.
Nice. Play message. This is Aurora. Distress signal received. Rescue operation will be dispatched to your location in nine, 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 <laughs> nine hours. Continue to monitor for emergency transmissions from other life pods. That is uh, super reassuring. Um, okay. Well, I don't know if rescue is gonna come then, but uh, like, what is the end game here? <laughs> if uh, if we're not going to be rescued, actually, yes. Okay, grab that. Let's take another med kit there. Um, all right. Well, now that we've used the radio, um, there's not really giving us any other directions. So it's really just all about survival right now. Let's have a look at what we can make with uh, our blueprints. Um, because, yeah, we need sort of some other goal to work towards at this stage. I think maybe the Hab Builder um, and... I think the other episode we saw like a sea glide or something like that. Um, I'm hoping that lets us traverse a little bit faster. Yeah, here it is. So we've scanned one of two. We just need to find more. So I think that's what we'll work towards. So we need, oh, what are those things? Wiring kits, computer chips, and batteries. Okay, all of which I think we should be able to make right so a wiring kits we need a couple of silver ores I thought we already had a, a couple but okay no we don't have any spares so we're gonna need to find some more silver but the computer chips... Oh, okay, we need a bit of gold. Which I don't think I have. And we need some copper wire. We do have a bit of copper though. So let's just make the copper wire. I don't know if I should invest a lot more in copper wire. I think I should. It's probably going to be a few other things that I'll need copper wire for. Yeah, I'm sort of just trying to tidy up our inventory a little bit more here. Oops. Um. Mm, I think maybe we have no choice but to make some storage to try and keep stuff in. This creature egg. Uh, would it be bad if I took that and just let go of it? Because I'm feeling like that's probably a good idea. Plus, if I leave it out here, I'm thinking we'll be able to sort of come back to it and, and find it again, <laughs> if it's that important. Um, right, so let's make this locker because um, I think that's going to help quite a bit. So waterproof locker. Let's do it. Okay, and just drop that somewhere nearby. I guess that's good enough. And from here, oh. Nope. Let's just maybe leave it near the entrance. Like that. Uh, open storage. There we go. That's not a lot of space though, to be fair. But I think I'll load up my quartz in there. And what else? Maybe I can put some titanium in there as well. I've got more titanium sitting in here, so. Now I can put sulfur in here, silver, the silicon rubber, Table coral, yeah, 
mean that I'd have to do. Unless I want to get more lockers, but um... Ooh, I can actually rename the locker as well. Uh, I don't think I really need to do that right now though. What's this? Oh, lead. Um, I think that's what we need to make the radiation suit, right? Is that a good goal to try and work towards? So I don't think it'll be difficult to make. We've got the fiber mesh. Yeah, and a couple of lead. So, and I think we also have like two fiber mesh, right? No, we only have the one. Uh, but I think it's very easy to get more fiber mesh. So if we go for some of the creep vine, I think they're called creep vine. We should be able to, hopefully, make some more. There we go. Let's not overload ourselves with too much of it. Okay, and... Oh, wait a sec. No, we need two. <laughs> we need two of them. I'm trying to keep an eye out for more bladder fish. Because, uh... Starting to feel like we need to drink very soon. Is there such a thing as overfishing? Because uh, that's a bit of a concern for me as well. Like, if I catch too many of the fish, will the entire population just plummet? Brilliant. Okay, now we should be able to get that suit. And... Yeah, okay. We've already got it. So, that's good. Getting there, guys. Um, though, we haven't even found any radiation just yet, but at least we'll be ready for when that happens. Um, okay, so... I think the next thing that I want to try and work towards is that sea glide. Uh, we need to have it scanned first, though, so I'm probably looking for wreckage and stuff. So uh, I can't really remember where we can find wreckage. Is there a way to speed up time? Like, because um, if we can sleep and sort of work in the daytime, that'd be preferable. But I guess maybe that's not a thing. Hmm. It's all right, let's um, work back to our water pump. Uh, sorry, not water pump, our um, air pump. And uh, I'm hoping that within that general area we might have more wreckage to hopefully sift through. Uh, apparently we can scan this. Scattered wreckage. Analysis confirms this wreckage is from the Aurora. Outer layers of the material have oxidized, suggesting it has been heated to over 1200 degrees Celsius. This pattern is consistent with hull disintegration during atmospheric entry. Salvage of intact portions of Altera vessels is prohibited at legal, moral, and technical levels. However, scraps such as these may be reclaimed for their titanium content at any Altera fabricator. Yep. Okay. Good to know. Oh yes, uh, that's right. We did scan one of these guys. I forgot to actually have a read of it, so... We should do that. Um, and we didn't read the one on the crash fish as well. 
This unusual species has developed an emergency defense mechanism based on mutually assured destruction. <laughs> <laughs> Forward Mountain Eye uh, enables the creature to identify and track potential predators. The sulfur plant has evolved to feed on sulfuric compounds secreted by the crash fish, which makes its nest within its leaves. Stronger, more protective plants provide superior nesting grounds, which in turn provide the plant with more nutrients from larger crash fish. Defense mechanism. Concentrations of sulfur build up in the organism over time. If the crash fish collides with something at sufficient speed, the spikes on its torso are impacted, triggering an explosive chemical reaction. Equip stasis rifle, repulsion cannon, or similar before approaching shallow caves. What? Stasis rifle? Repulsion cannon? Exciting, all right. That means those are things that we could potentially make to try and defend ourselves from whatever's in these waters. Um, yeah, there's just so much stuff to scan all the time, guys. Um, veined nettle. A common shallow water plant which frequents, frequently shows signs of predation around the edges of the leaves. Thick violet veins carry nutrients to the extremities of the fan and brightly colored seeds grow around the base and stem. Hmm. Right, um, have we finished exploring? I thought that one was already, already dead. Do they respawn after a while? There's no more sulfur there, though. I guess maybe they do respawn? In which case we do have to be a little bit careful. Yeah, I mean, that, that one's already respawned. Yeah, okay, so I think we're done here, but... What I do want to do is, um... Oxygen. Firstly, get some oxygen. Um, but I do want to look around the general area to see if there's more stuff that we can scan. Specifically wreckage, like this. Nice. Okay. So, the sea glide. Let's just take a look at that. Alright, we need a battery, some lubricant, copper wire, and titanium. We have everything we need for that, actually, so I think we should pin that and try to work towards that um, instead of maybe trying to work towards the habitat builder. I think it makes sense because we should be able to, hopefully using the sea glide, move around a little bit faster as well. Um, is there anything else that I haven't read? The suit fully protects against effects of radiation during land, sea, and space exploration. Safety rated up to 400... I think that's sieverts per hour. Cross-compatible with all AEP suit functionality. Sleek. <laughs> Very important. Um, Post-Mad World. Hmm. Uh, didn't we scan one of those fish and we haven't really read it? Um, fauna, herbivores, small... Here, shuttlebug. A common scavenger at the base of the food chain, mouth parts. Small enough to be of little threat to most organisms. This creature is clearly adapted to feed, uh, sorry, feed on the waste products of the ecosystem around it used to orient themselves when drifting and to filter through detritus or on cave floors, the mandibles, and Oxygen. it has three legs, high strength muscles can prepare, propel the life form great distances through the water, as well as ambulating them across the sea floor. Assessment. Necessary waste recycler presence may indicate nearby cave systems. Okay, right. So if we're looking for caves, we just need to look for those things. Okay, let's grab these and let's perhaps maybe move ourselves a little bit 
further. Um, again, trying to find wrecks and stuff. Sea glide fragments. We can scan it again. Um, oh. Okay, that just gave us some more titanium, actually, so if we're in need of more titanium, scanning stuff that you've already scanned is, I guess, one way you can get some more. Be careful of those uh, predator-looking fish. Uh, there might be some caves down there and in there as well, so... Uh, the real issue that I have, though, is with um, orienting myself and making sure that I'm sort of in the right spot. But uh, perhaps maybe what we can do is quickly set things up for this location. And I just need to remember how to get back here, though, so... This big old cave. Bit of salt. Let's just have a breather and um, I'm thinking I want to try and go for the sea glide since we should have everything we need for it. have a look at what we have. Ooh, got a bit of gold there, and I think we just said that we needed some gold, didn't we? Grab some peepers while we're at it. Maybe some boomerang fish. Okay, we've got a few bladder fish to convert to water as well, so we should be able to top up everything. Do we have a compass? I think we do. Hmm. I'm just trying to make sure that we sort of know how to get to that cave system. I think roughly I sort of know where it is. And once we reach the, uh, the spot where the coral is sticking out, we should be able to just go a little bit further, find the, um, what looks like a trench, um, full of those creep vine. Right, anyway, let's firstly make some water, and from here, I think we'll, um, sort out everything that we need for making the sea glide. Cured food. Right. 
So does that mean we'd be able to like keep the foods preserved for longer and therefore we can sort of bring the food with us when we need to? Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Although I'm a little bit reluctant to use salt for that because I think salt has a few other applications. So let's not rush into it just yet. Uh, let's have some dinner, Vital sign lunch, stabilizing. breakfast, whatever time it is, um, and yeah, let's sort out the sea glide. So we've got the copper wire, I've got one of those already. The battery, we just need the acid shrooms, a couple of those, I only have one actually. Um, and what else do we need for that? Copper, which we have. And we need some lubricant, which I've already got some lubricant made because uh, I accidentally made it. So let's go out and find some more of the shrooms. Plenty nearby. And yeah, I suppose I don't really want to pick up too many. As I said before, inventory management is going to be an issue. Trying my best not to. Was that blinking before? Receiving pre-recorded distress call, laying back. This is LifePod 3, uploading our coordinates. We're plugging some holes in our emergency sea glide, so if we're late for the rendezvous, don't panic. Also, don't go home without us. Seriously. Three out. Uh... Signal location uploaded to PDA. Excuse me? A rendezvous? How do we not know about a rendezvous? Life pod 3. Shallows. Crew reported their sea glide damaged. So we want to try and work our way there. Well, I guess the directive did sort of say that we're supposed to try and look for survivors, right? I mean, if we get the sea glide, um ready we should hopefully be able to to get there pretty quickly um let's grab copper wire and yeah we should be able to tuck in a few other bits and pieces now oh uh i do need one titanium though The sea glide will increase your effective exploration range. For your safety, please pack supplies for long journeys and stay within five kilometers of the nearest life pod or habitat. I mean, <laughs> this is so good. It does run off of a uh, battery though, so I'm a little bit worried about that. Power goes down pretty quickly. Um, so there are some lights, and then... Oh, what? There's a map here as well. Okay, that is so cool. Alright, um... Do we go for the... Uh, distress signal? Maybe we should. It's 200 meters away, that's... Yeah, that's actually not very far away. Um, let me just very quickly untag stuff that we don't really need, but we could probably tag the Hab Builder now, because uh, I think that wiring kit is what we needed the gold for, so we might need to come back to that sooner than later. Can I pick things up while I'm... Yeah, okay. Oh, that is so good. Um, this is an interesting looking area we should try and explore. Okay, um... Let's, um, how do I... Oh, I just unequip it, basically. I was saying, how do I unequip? Uh, or let go, sorry. Oh god. I was having too much fun with the sea glide. And, uh, 
forgot completely about our oxygen intake. <laughs> um, I mean, didn't we just hear from these guys? Like, what happened? Are these guys not here? New blueprint acquired. A compass? Ah, oh, yes please. I would love to know which direction I'm going in. Um... Life pop three crew log. Life pod three crew log. Let's have a look. Uh... Oh, we can play it. You really think it'll carry two of us? Your regular sea glide tows a mass of 80 kilograms at over 30 kilometers an hour. The power seller rigged to this one should double that. You think there's something out there that's faster? I'm sure. And that's assuming it doesn't overload three meters from the life pod. You're calm about this. I'm seeing the engineering problem. If I stop seeing the maths, I'll be terrified. Okay. So I guess they were concerned about something out there, potentially. That's moving a lot faster than the sea glide, which is not reassuring. <laughs> um, do I want to explore this area? Um, maybe not while it's too dark. I do like seeing limestone rocks. 30 seconds. Yeah, so using the sea glide, I should be able to also just resurface a lot faster as well. Oh my god, this is a game changer. <laughs> Earth. A hoverfish. Integrating new PDA data. Specimen with in an infection. Um, hang on. Let's have a look. So hoverfish, a small cautious herbivore commonly found in kelp rich environments. Charged foot pads, six unique limb appendages feature charged pads capable of ionizing the surrounding water. The hoverfish uses this ability to maintain its position against the current as it feeds from kelp and lichen. Assessment, edible. Okay, so we can cook them. Uh, I didn't pick one up actually, but uh, if we need to, we can. Um, And we saw something else there. Specimen with symptoms of infection. This organism is displaying signs of bacterial infection. Bright green blisters are forming networks around the infection sites. Pathology suggests a waterborne bacterium capable of penetrating the body through the skin and respiratory system. Underlying indications of genetic mutation and aggressive behavior. The bacterium itself is unlike any so far recorded in human exploration. Warning, may be contagious, avoid. Do not, under any circumstances, consume the flesh. Okay, alright, so... They're edible, but we shouldn't eat them then. Okay, so this is um, some of the deeper areas near our actual pod. Um, since we've got a sea glide, we may as well just look around a little bit. Yeah, this is one of those things. Um, 30 seconds. Oh, okay, 30 seconds. We've got a little bit of time. Oh, wow. I didn't even know this was underneath us. 
Drooping Stinger. Okay. Um, let's have a read of the Drooping Stinger, but we might do that as we get back to our escape pod, and um, I'm thinking of seeing if we have enough gold to make one of those, um, was it the wiring kits that we needed the gold with? Or the gold four, rather? No, we need silver for that. My bad. Um, oh, it's the computer chip that we need the, needed the gold for. So um, we need some more copper wire, though, which I think I do have some. And silver. Do I have more silver? I might grab the silver for now. Uh, that way we'll be ready to sort of craft the computer chip when we actually hang on no we do have enough silver oh fantastic all right cool so we may as well get both of these done now and then advanced wiring kit okay so that's just unlocked now um and then yeah we just need the normal wiring kit as well and now we just need a battery, so another couple of acid mushrooms, and we should be set. So let's go ahead and find some more. Yeah, I won't worry about using the sea glide too much for shorter distances, because um, don't forget it does run off of power, which is running out already, compared to some of the other devices that we have. Um, there we go. Now we have everything. The Builder tool is designed to construct habitats capable of withstanding extreme environmental conditions. Well, yep, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, because I've been sort of scrolling through the blueprint section quite a bit, there's actually already uh, quite a few things here that we can construct using the Habitat Builder. Base pieces. Uh, okay. I thought we would already have, like, the ability to craft, like, specific rooms, but... Um, this is probably what I'm looking for, the multi-purpose room. But apparently I need to scan these first? It says zero out of two. So, yeah, I guess I'm going to need to scan stuff. Maybe trying to work towards the compass is not a bad idea. Uh, we need a bit more silver. Um, actually, one thing that I was sort of curious about is whether or not I can uh, get to know where to find certain ingredients through the PDA. Um... I guess not. Alright, um, well, I suppose the next best thing is to really just try and find some more caves and try to find those rocks that we can break open. Um, because that's how we found the gold and that's how we found the silver as well. So, uh, yeah, let's head back towards that direction. Hang on. Just seen this radio icon pop up. Does that mean that we've got 
something to listen to over here. This is Ozzy from the cafeteria. What the hell, guys? They didn't warn us this might happen. Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system, and this grim-looking snake thing's trying to eat through the hull. Come get us already. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Uh, did he just say, like, snake-looking monster? Um, hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. Hey, what happened to the signal for the previous place? Is that something that we can... Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So... Life Pod 3... We have actually seen before. So perhaps maybe what I want to do is just mark this with a different color. Can I find that somewhere on my HUD? There, okay. Uh, so that's our goal. Perhaps maybe what we could do is we can give it like a, a different color, like a, a bright yellow or something, that way we know that that's going to be our next goal, um, or at least one of our goals. But um, yeah, I'm thinking I want to try and get the um, the compass as soon as possible because that'll help out quite a bit. I mean, if any of you guys have watched any of my series, I'm pretty horrendous when it comes to directions and um, inventory management. But um, at least having some stuff that might actually help us would be beneficial, even though I'm still pretty terrible at it. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's try and work towards getting the compass. Um, at the very least, the, um, the sea glide should help us with uh, getting around a little bit quicker, but yeah, I'm sort of thinking I want to be a little bit stingy with the use, considering uh, we're already at like almost 75% charge. Yeah, okay, so this is where we were before. Um, let's perhaps... Um, work on exploring the cave here. Be advised, a common complication for cave divers is loss of orientation, followed by eventual asphyxiation. Okay, thanks for, thanks for the warning. Um, God. Oh, Lord. Okay, managed to avoid that one. This comes back out again. Thirty seconds. Okay. Ow. A stalker. Maybe scan it. while it's not looking. Stalker. Um, let's have a read. A streamlined... Ow! Okay, maybe... <laughs> maybe while not um, actually underwater and while not actually in the pathway of those dangerous things, but uh, a streamlined predator encountered in the kelp forests in weight of prey leaving the safety of the shallows to feed. The stalker likely carved out its evolutionary niche at the sweet spot between speed and size millions of years ago and may be one of the oldest species on the planet. The stalker appears to be attracted to titanium deposits which tend to sharpen and put stress on its teeth. As with many predators, it may be possible to temporarily distract hungry stalkers by feeding them. 
Okay, so if you have like some dead fish or whatever. Oh god. Alright, these guys are actually relentless. <laughs> well, let's let's hang out over here in safety. Um Yeah, okay. The stalker's teeth are unusually hard and fast growing. Its elongated snout can deliver huge biting pressure to a sorry, to larger attackers while also being used to reach smaller herbivores seeking refuge among the rocks. Night vision. Retinal layering on the eyeballs suggests adaptation for nighttime hunting. Dorsal ridges. These ridges can be moved independently to deliver superior maneuverability. Pelvic fins. Long and powerful, the stalker has evolved to hunt the fastest of prey. Uh, assessment. Stalker teeth may have the application in um, enameled glass fabrication. Stalker teeth? Okay, so we're gonna have to try and hunt some of these stalkers then. Alright, um, that's a lot to take in. <laughs> right, uh, considering where we're at, guys, uh, with the episode, I think this is where we're going to take a bit of a break, but, um, yeah, just in front of the, uh, wreckage of the Aurora there, I'm sure at some point we'll actually get close enough to explore but uh, still a few episodes to come because um, it is very far from the um, the pod so we could get hungry and um, we could find ourselves out of power and stuff like that to run things like the sea glide so we're gonna have to try and resolve uh, certain issues before we even attempt going to the explore the Aurora. Um, the other thing is we do have the Hab Builder, right? So... This thing. Uh, which I haven't really played around with, so we might actually play around with it in the next episode and see how far we can get. But, uh, anyway, this is me signing off. Hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. If you did, dropping a like definitely helps out quite a bit. Otherwise, subscribe, stay true, I'll see you guys in the next one.